Stations, if you encounter any technical issues related to this live show broadcast, please call our trouble hotline at 336-464-1806. Mark, two minutes until airtime for this live show broadcast. Your next time cue will come with one minute until airtime on the Rice Sports Network. Stations, we're coming up on one minute until air time. One minute in five, four, three, two, mark. One minute stations, one minute until air time for this live show broadcast. Studios, when you hear, please start your archive recording. Coming up on 30 seconds until airtime on my mark. Mark, 30 seconds. Your next and final time cue will be with 15 seconds until airtime. Coming up on 15 seconds until airtime. Mark, 15 seconds stations. Have fun. The following is a Learfield presentation of the Rice Sports Network. On the Rice Sports Network from Learfield, live from Acme Oyster House, welcome to the Mike Bloomgren Show. Acme Oyster House, life's more fun with seafood. The Mike Bloomgren Show is brought to you by the parking spot. We have airport parking covered. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 716. Lighting up Rice University and Houston for over 100 years. Now, alongside Coach Bloomgren, here's the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. Yes, how we doing? Go out there, trust me. Big Pack House, there we go. Opening broadcast here of the uh, 2022 slate. I am J.P. Heath. We are here live, the Mike Bloomgren Show at Acme Oyster House here off Westheimer. Yes, indeed. Yes, thank you, sir. Well, I do not know, but thank you. Uh, football shows each week brought to you by Acme Oyster House, Houston Red Beans, and Rice University. Acme Oyster House, proud sponsor of Rice Football. After the game, uh, come join us for a fried seafood platter, shrimp po' boy, or a dozen char-grilled oysters. Acme, the best little oyster house in Texas. It's a Houston restaurant week. They've got some uh, great uh, great deals here. $25 per person. That is uh, through uh, September 5th. You get a great deal, 25 bucks for an appetizer, entree, dessert. And they challenged me. I, I was going over this... Uh, this uh, nice menu, and uh, I settled on the Acme Special. Give me a nice uh, po' boy to start things off. Here this 2022 slate of shows. We have uh, Coach Boomer coming up in a matter of moments. He is so popular, they're just walking up, just trying to hand him some food. Uh, his Owls opening the season Saturday at USC. Nate Walter and I have the broadcast uh, on the Owls game day app, riceowls.com, 430 Houston Methodist uh, pregame. We return our in-booth feed again on the Owls Facebook and YouTube pages, just like we are here tonight. And uh, on the show tonight, we go with some captains, Trey Schumann and Shea Baker. 
Gents, thanks for uh, coming up. They will uh, don the headset here shortly. Strength coach Hans Strom and uh, executive director of player personnel and recruiting Marco uh, Regalado going to join us. And then coach and I break down Lincoln Riley's USC Trojans. Right now it is fifth year. Uh, Dunleavy family head football coach of our Rice Owls, Mike Bloomgren. We could not time this any better, coach. Just uh, giving you food to uh, to sample here. Yeah, absolutely. Can't beat that. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. Yeah, great to see you. Um, we, we talked uh, during the off season and some early season, and you had some some big themes. And one thing we we, we discussed, you discussed with the rest of the media, is going into year five, uh, just uh, really uh, ownership with the players, but uh, the relationship aspect with the players too. Just uh, uh, discuss it. It was a big off season, but just uh, some of the things that that you all did. Yeah, it was just an awesome time to be around the guys and really made the shift to making sure they, they understand that we've got to be player-led if we're going to reach our goals, if we're going to reach our potential. Like, when a play needs to be made, the coaches are great, and they're going to give them great things and, and great motivation, but they're going to be a sideline away when that play needs to be made. And we've got a couple of leaders like those two sitting at that table that have done just a great job taking ownership of that and not only taking ownership but wanting it. Like, put more on me. Let me lead this team. Let me help. And so that's been a lot of fun. Off-season busy, of course, uh, with the number one or two, three things that uh, really encouraged you about the off-season. As you segue from spring, as we know, there's not really an off-season these days, but then got into the, the fall workouts. Yeah, I think the things that were really positive is watching the way these guys work, you know, and, and getting to see them with Coach Straub and seeing them push through and seeing how much better we are. It's kind of like, you know, you're seeing the – additional pieces come together because it's not a normal offseason. You had people join our football team in January. You know, we had four guys join in January. Then you had some join our team in May. Then you had some join in June. And then, believe it or not, we had some join the first week of August. Uh, there were scholarship guys that had to graduate at their prior institution. So you're always trying to watch how, number one, the team comes together and how they accept those new pieces and really t teach them the standards that we believe in. And then more than that, the first time you get to see them on the field with our guys, you get to see, oh, yeah, that's why we recruited them. You know, they're, they're pretty talented kids as well. And so I, I think that was great for me to see. The other thing that's been just so fun in training camp is to see the impact of depth. And we all know, like, depth helps you on game day. But depth helps you every day when, when you know you have to push yourself because somebody's right behind you. Somebody's playing really good football as well. And so not only does it, does it help your football team when it's ones versus twos and they're giving an outstanding look, but it helps when that person that's wearing the one jersey in front of you feels how good you're doing. And it just, you know, there's very few of us in this world that could push ourselves to, to our, our limits and beyond without the help of a coach or in this case, and which I think is the best way to be pushed is by, by the depth behind you in the competition. Yeah, speaking of, the uh, number one story in the offseason was the uh, quarterback battle between Wiley Green and T.J. McMahon. Uh, I talked to each of them separately about it, and uh, Wiley got the nod, but they each said the other one pressed them, and there's not any contention or uh, rivalry. It was the flip. They said, I mean, really, their character led them, and the competition bred uh, them in, in a great battle there. Yeah, I think it did. I mean, it's the ultimate iron sharpens iron. And you look at how those two kids are supporting each other right now. Uh, I think it's still outstanding because it's, it's not easy to do, especially when you're in the position of TJ where you came out of spring and, and really had a great spring game and you kind of led all through the summer. And then Wiley just had an outstanding camp. And so, you know, there's, there's disappointment that goes with that, especially when you put your heart and soul into anything. And for him to just continue to be a great teammate day to day, it's really outstanding. And and those guys are continuing to push each other. And uh, I, I think that the fact that we trust both of them to go in a football game is just so freaking cool. And the fact that then we had to make a decision based on a meritocracy, based on who performed better uh, all through camp in the total body of work, but also specifically in those two scrimmages. Uh, but again, just a lot of fun. And it's fun to watch those two support each other. On the coaching staff side of things, uh, everything remained relatively the same. There's always uh, change, but at the same time, except for uh, C.J. Anderson, largely the coaching staff remained intact. So how, do, how does that consistency and fluidity help you here? Yeah, I think the consistency is awesome anytime you can do it. But when you lose somebody, you know, the last two years we've lost, uh, or the last three years, I guess, we've lost two coaches to the SEC, one to the University of Tennessee, one to the University of Alabama. 
and then we've lost two to the NFL, uh, losing Mike Devlin to the Ravens and then losing Robbie Picasso to the Texans. So we're losing good coaches to good places, but you know the challenge is always to replace them with somebody even better. And that's exciting when you get a chance to go out and get C.J. Anderson. Uh, I joke around. The last time I saw C.J. Anderson before his interview was uh, Laura and I were in the stands at Super Bowl 50 watching him score a touchdown in Peyton Manning's last game. <laughs> and uh, so that's pretty cool. And, and he comes in with all this teach tape and all these interview things, and it's him running the ball. And, and that's a lot different than when I teach things. I teach off other people's actions. He's like, no, this is how I did it. And uh, I think that's really cool. But you got C.J., and then other NFL influences, you know, we brought in, I think you and I talked before about bringing Philip Gaines back to the program. Yeah. He's working with our cornerbacks. And then also Sammy Parker, who was a longtime NFL wide receiver, is working as, as a QC, working with our receivers and, and working with Coach Tui as well. So it's a great staff. I, I love going to work with those guys every day. And, and I love what they're bringing to the kids. I love the juice they're bringing and I love the knowledge they're bringing. Brian Smith, a lot back on the defense. Uh, George Nyakwal coming back after some time off. Uh, we got Trey Schumann. We'll talk to him in a second. But how do you like the parts on, on the defense? Because while you lost some, you have guys coming back that had played a lot before in prior seasons. Yeah, you know, as, as hard as there were, those times were over the course of the last two seasons where we had young guys on the field because of injury, like now you, you kind of are seeing the benefits of that where you've had a lot of people uh, in our 2D that have played an awful lot of football. And then having guys like Trey Schumann back, uh, that he'll play a big role this Saturday night. And then George, you know, back as the big bad wolf in the middle of the field. Those things just have so much value. And, you know, it's not just Trey. It's not just George. It's Trey Sean Chamberlain. It's you know, when we can get Trey D back, that's going to be a big deal. It's to Braylon Carroll, who everybody's almost forgot about. You know, like he was an all-conference kid. And so it, it's the sum of those parts that I'm so excited about. Yeah. I talked to uh, Shea Baker. We'll talk more coming up when he comes to the high table. But the offensive line play, what have you liked? In the improvements in the offensive line play in the offseason? It's night and day. I, I think, like, number one, having Isaac Klarkowski and Shea there. Shea could jump in at center and, and really run the ship completely. But I think he's, he's seemingly more comfortable at guard right now. Uh, maybe it's because of uh, the, the offseason of work there. But those guys together are seeing things really well. They're communicating. Uh, and then you've got, besides Shea, you've got Ethan Aniawa, who is an outstanding talent, right? Like a, just a, a really cool piece of clay that's coming into his own. And Shea's helping him through things day after day after day. The other person that's helping Ethan as well as the left guard is Clay Servin. Like Clay Servin's now a pretty big time vet, you know, who's who's played a lot of football and uh, more than playing a lot of football, he's playing his best football and it's not even close. And the challenge is always going to be to guys like Shea, uh, who's not like naturally gonna gonna talk a whole lot. Uh, and Clay, like, man, we gotta talk more. We just gotta talk more because your voice resonates and means so much to this football team. And, and they're doing it. And I just remind them, I walked by Clay the other day, and I was like, hey, man, it's exhausting to repeat the same message to somebody, isn't it? He goes, yeah. <laughs> I go, don't stop. You know, don't stop. Like, you've got to understand, like, this journey, and especially when you talk about leadership, it is a marathon. And occasionally it's a marathon and a sprint, but it's always a marathon. You know what I mean? And so we can't just have it in bursts. It's got to be a, a forever thing and an everyday thing, be the same guy every day, and then continue that the same season, this whole season. Always a big deal when you name the captains uh, before the season. Uh, we've got two of those uh, co-captains here tonight with uh, with Trey Schumann and Shea Baker. But uh, Wiley has been out there. You have a lot of experience, obviously, in the, the uh, captains. We do, you know, and, and two returning captains in Wiley and Trey and the, the comfort that we have with those guys. It was nice to see how many votes that they got on their sides of the ball again. And then when you add Shea Baker and add George Nyakwal, that's exciting. And then we opened it up kind of like we did two years ago or last year as well. And not just a specialist for the special teams captain, but somebody who has a, a big influence on the special teams. And they gave it to Josh Piercy. And, you know, there's just no greater honor than to be voted a captain by your teammates. And so I, I think about those five guys and how their teammates feel about them and, and to hear them speak and get a little emotional at the front of the room after they were named a captain. I just think it's so cool, and I look forward to those guys leading our team, and I look forward to, to those guys right there along with Josh Piercy walking out for the coin toss. I mean, Josh Piercy sure looks like he belongs on a college football team. 
Yeah, finally, tell us more about uh, Trey and Shay coming up these next couple segments. You wanted to highlight the great student athletes, uh, what, what they mean, and they're, uh, they're both, both sides of the ball, they mean so much to you. They do, and, and there's not many of those guys that, that get to play college football for six years. And, uh, you know, thanks to COVID and uh, their different red shirts, we're, we're fortunate to have them. And, you know, I, I got a chance to go and, and bring them to Conference USA Media Day uh, over in Dallas, and it was just such a fun day being around these guys to hear how positive they are, how much they believe in their teammates and their coaches. It's everything. It, it's like why you do this thing. And just to hear – uh, again, their passion for our team and their belief in our team. It's, it's a lot of fun right now to be around those guys. But now, look, their play, there's a reason why uh, people notice them. It's a reason other coaches talk about them. It's a reason why NFL scouts mention them. So they're great players as well. But I'm, I'm so fired up about their leadership and, and what this team means to them and what they mean to our team. All right, speaking of that, we'll get to the next. Coach, thanks. We'll talk more about USC coming up later on. Sounds great. That leave you family and football coach of our Rice Owls, Mike Lundgren, is speaking of. We'll have defensive lineman Trey Schumann coming up next back at Acme Oyster House for the Mike Bloomgren Show from Learfield. Hey, Oscar, Oscar, wake up. Hi, this is Otis and Oscar. We're talking spokes oysters for Acme Oyster House. You've probably seen us on TV. My friend Oscar is, uh, sleeping. You know, we oysters like our beds. Anyway, drop by tonight for a dozen raw, a dozen char grilled, a seafood platter or po' boy, and maybe a few laughs. Come at me, bro. Not you. Back me oyster house. Life's more fun with seafood. Build it, price it, own it. Go online and see Shoppers and John Deere's new way to get a John Deere tractor just the way you want it. Google shop as John Deere and let your John Deere tractor story begin. Build the tractor you want with the attachments you need to get your work done. Price it. No hidden costs and financing options available for any budget. Own it. And shoppers will deliver your John Deere tractor. Build it. Price it. Own it. It's shoppers' new way to get the John Deere tractor you want your way. Shoppers. All things John Deere. We interrupt your top 40 hits to issue this alert from the Carbon Brewing Company. In our efforts to brew our distinct and popular Hoppadillo IPA, we have unwittingly created a monster. A monster with an insatiable thirst. A monster that will not stop until it gets what it wants. An ice-cold Hoppadillo IPA. Just like the one I'm holding in my hand. Bold. Flavorful. Dry-hopped. Irresistible. <laughs> Sweet Mary! Hoppadillo. Find it before it finds you. Bravely brewed in Texas by the Carbach Brewing Company. Another season of women's and men's college sports is underway. Follow your alma mater or favorite team in their pursuit of the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. Trophies will be awarded in June 2023 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. This is the Mike Bloomgren Show, live at Acme Oyster House. Here again, the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back here at Acme Oyster House. It is a great spot. Little, little soggy. We don't mind you clapping. We don't mind you clapping. Clap away. Great acoustics in here. Uh, Walter was telling me a uh, story you can get with him off there. This used to be a video store and his uh, now wife lived around the corner but a, a great a great spot here just off uh, Westheimer coming next uh, segment we'll talk to uh, one of the other co-captains guard Shea Baker but if you can believe it somehow in year six this is his uh, first appearance on a, a coach's show spot I, I don't know what to do Trey Schumann there's not a, a zoom camera in front of us we <laughs> talked a couple times in the off season, how are yeah, you doing? I'm doing really well. How about yourself? Good. Can I complain one bit? What you have on the menu tonight? Looks like you scarfed that down pretty. Yeah, good. I had the grilled shrimp platter with some uh, sweet potato fries, and it, it hit. It was good stuff. Good deal. Um, tell us your approach. How you've done this a few times over, um, starting a season. What's the anticipation like? And now that you've done it five times, and our red shirt yeah. mixed in there too not much is going to surprise you with the preparation of it. So how does this compare to seasons past? Um, I feel like it's a lot less of me getting myself ready and making sure my teammates are ready. Uh, you know, when you do it the first five times, it's a, uh, it's a good experience and, and you get to learn a lot yourself. So a lot of it is turning the focus to my teammates who are younger, the guys like Akina who are 
stepped up for us major in the past and then just guys who are coming in like Quint Titt, who's new to the program and just making sure that he knows how we operate and when he gets rolling that everything goes smooth so it's been a lot less of focus on me getting ready because I know how to do that and helping my guys get ready yeah we, we did a, a leadership uh, segment on YouTube during the offseason I was uh, refreshing myself I studied it one of the things you, you mentioned was it's not always the vocal leader you have to lead by example, not right. just you, but being a co-captain, you're not just going out there for the coin toss, right? So what else goes into that? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it, I think a, the biggest thing is is the communication among captains. I mean, me, Shay, and, uh, me, Shay, and George all came in together. And then you have Wiley and Josh, who are guys who have been under us for a few years now. So the fact that we're all on the same page and we have been able to come up together and we kind of are able to dissipate the same message that comes from the coaches has been has been really nice and been a big part of why we're going to be successful this year. A Hansonite, yeah. right? And uh, graduated with your degree in uh, economics and managerial studies, ho-hum, uh, a minor in business, now getting your MBA. Yeah. Uh, since the last couple of months, I guess, we talked interview setting. How, how's that been going for you? That's good. Uh, registered for classes for my, oh, gosh, fifth quadmester. I'm over halfway done, so looking forward to that, kind of getting to the nitty-gritty of things. You told me also it, it feels like it's the first time you've, you've been healthy, and a uh, healthy tray is a dangerous tray. How, how are you feeling on that front? Yeah, I mean, I feel great. Uh, I still stand by that, and I've, I've had a long off season to get my body ready, and it's been nice. You know, I was actually able to take some reps off in spring and fall camp and just really focus on being healthy for this first game, and I think everyone's going to be able to see a difference when we go out there on Saturday. This would have been a different interview if we talked about five years ago because you came in, you thought you'd be a, again, a ho-hum cupcake major, chemistry and do a pre-med. Yeah. And then you told me some interesting nuggets how you switched to uh, not only with econ, but wanting to get into the uh, real estate side of things. Yeah, right? yeah. So I came in chemistry, pre-med, figured out I didn't want to go to school for a million years. Um, <laughs> Got to have a great experience with one of our econ professors, uh, Jimmy Danico, and kind of just rocked with economics from there. And then summer 2018 and summer 2020, I was able to work with uh, Mike Eklund, one of the alum, yeah. and just really fell in love with real estate. And then thankfully, the one bright thing that came from COVID was this sixth year that's allowing me to do this two-year MBA. And I've um, decided that my focus is investment management. I've been talking to a lot of people in real estate and making great connections. I've kind of all been blessing on top of blessings since I decided to switch. So is there a specific area, like I don't know, subset is the right term, that you want to get in? Like, like where does – I'm undecided well, you Obviously, you play football for a while, right, too. After right, that. but I'm undecided on that. I think the, the, the great thing about real estate is the scope of the job. Obviously, you have – you're dealing with investors, which is more a person-to-person -person thing, and then you have your more math background, which is just – crunching the numbers. I, I haven't decided which one I really want to focus on yet. And uh, I've got a little time, but not too much. So I should probably start to figure it out. <laughs> That's all right. You have plenty of time, <laughs> right? So talk about kind of rewind a few years coming from Burleson, how you had some other uh, opportunities, but <laughs> it's, it's like a softball, almost like put it on a tee. How, how great was that decision that you, you come to Rice when I'm sure you had uh, a lot of other opportunities? Yeah, I mean, there, there were a good amount of opportunities coming out of high school, which was nice. Um, I, get, I can kind of thank two of my teammates who are older than me for bringing all those college coaches to our high school back in the day. I want to shout out my boy <laughs> Cody Russi, who's actually um, – been able to be with the Patriots and hopefully makes that 53 man tomorrow. But uh, it's, it's been a blessing in disguise, honestly, you know, coming to rice, it was a rough freshman year, obviously, like we go through hurricane Harvey, I have a couple of surgeries. So it's, it felt like a lot at first. And then kind of, as I got settled and got my feet in the ground, everything started to come together. And now that I'm in year six, I feel great. And I just, I, I wouldn't do anything differently, honestly. You've been around, uh, long enough to go to these big venues that I'm not saying there's not any nerves whatsoever, but what's the mentality that you try to also pass along to those younger guys? Hey, once the, it may be a, a cool historic venue, but once the game starts, yeah. just a, a regular game. I tell them, I mean, it's, it's normal. You know, you get out there and you got the jitters, especially if it's your first time. And I'm, very aware they're going to Coliseum. A few guys are going to be bright eyed and bushy tailed. But when I tell them is when you get out there, like everything just goes quiet. The calm of the game really takes over. And once you start playing, you don't even realize where you're at anymore. One or two uh, last 
thing is in with some connections you have with the staff, how you also told me over the summer that coincidentally, wish we could plan it this way, but Hans Straub is a guy that had been here. Yeah. Uh, you created that bond over right. the years and a guy that I'm sure has to get in your face from time to time, but <laughs> it seems like a, a good relationship you two have formed. Yeah, no, I mean, we definitely started off on a, a rough foot when I first came here, but now he's he's one of my go-to guys and I feel like I'm one of his. We had a lot of great talks over the summer where the team is going and what take those next steps. And he's been my point, man. I mean, that, this guy is someone that I'll have a for years to come after football. So, I mean, we talk every day. I see young people know We talk every day about one of our favorite comedians, Tom Sierra, and I just don't think there's a lot of spring coaches out there who can relate to their players on such a personal level. So, yeah, this – I mean, anyone who knows home, Hans Bob knows what kind of person he is, and I've yeah. been glad to be able to know him over these years. It's been a special relationship. Yeah, by the way, I am fully blaming you for the uh, wormhole, YouTube wormhole I got in. I was telling Hans before the show started, oh, tears streaming down. Yeah. <laughs> so a good mutual uh, comedian you have there. But also, um, you got a unique defensive line coach in Cedric Calhoun. How uh, Only one Cedric Calhoun out there. Is there it? is only one Cedric Calhoun. And, uh, yes, he will be at my wedding one day. Um, that guy a lot about us as football players too I mean, for practice. Uh, yeah see he definitely yeah. is locked in about it. it's been great having him around i think uh Trey, thanks a lot. Good not having a, a Zoom camera in front of us. Appreciate it. Go get them Saturday. Okay? Yes, Appreciate, it. Appreciate it. Trey Schumann of R. Rice Owl. Stay tuned. Coming up next, guy across the line of scrimmage. Another co-captain, Shea Baker, joins us next. Back at Acme Oyster House, more of the Mike Bloomkin Show from Learfield. Buy the best for less at Shoppers. Shoppers has the lowest prices on John Deere tractors. Don't leave money on the table with the best tractor at the best prices of the year. Shoppers makes it so easy with just a few clicks at our website. We dare you to compare. Go see our specials by Googling Shoppers at S-H-O-P-P-A-S. Build the tractor package of your dreams with our Build It, Price It, Own It tool. And we'll deliver your John Deere tractor for free. The best for less at Shoppers. All things John Deere. Double Tree by Hilton Houston Medical Center Hotel and Suites is the preferred hotel for anybody visiting the medical center, the museum district, or Rice University. We offer the largest suites in the medical center, complete with full kitchens, and our full-service restaurant and outdoor pool will make your stay complete. We look forward to having you experience the Double Tree by Hilton Houston Medical Center Hotel and Suites soon. And if you need a group rate or 10 or more rooms, don't forget to call 713-528-7744. That's 713-528-7744. Howdy Homemade Ice Cream is here. Howdy is an ice cream shop in Katy, Texas that makes ice cream in-house and has a unique mission to employ individuals that are differently abled. Stop by and enjoy some ice cream. With every scoop you buy, you help support employment for special needs. Coming to Rise Athletics venues in the fall. Houston, we have a cocktail. All hands canned cocktails are made with six times distilled craft vodka at a sturdy 10% ABV to ensure you never have to sacrifice the quality of your provisions. Now available in six natural flavors, including raspberry lemonade, ruby red grapefruit, cherry limeade, cranberry, and vodka soda. And vodka tonic classic. Follow the adventure on Instagram at, at Drink All Hands and try these car strength cocktails for yourself for the next game. All hands, damn fine cocktails. Proud sponsor of Rice Athletic. Big trip on the horizon? Before you depart, you gotta park. The parking spot is a simpler, easier way to navigate airport parking, and you can save when you book online. You're guaranteed a spot, and we even pick you up at your trunk in our yellow and black spotted shuttles and take you straight to the terminal. Parking and saving come full circle at the parking spot. The parking spot, proud sponsor of Rice University. Visit theparkingspot.com to reserve your spot today. You're listening to the latest on Owls football with the head coach, Mike Bloomgren. Now, let's go back inside Acme Oyster House. 
is our first edition of the Mike Bloomgren Show here from Newfield. We are at Acme Oyster House just off uh, Westheimer. We have uh, coming up next segment, we will uh, talk to strength coach Hans Straub, then executive director of player personnel and recruiting Marco Regalado. Then coach and I preview those USC Trojans. That's coming up from the Coliseum, L.A. Memorial Coliseum, uh, coming up Saturday afternoon. And... Uh, one of those guys uh, taking a lot of snaps will be uh, to my left. It is the one and only Shea Baker. Shea, how are you? Good, you? Cannot complain. How's the grub? Everything good? Yeah, it was great. Uh, yeah. And some, I think the same thing as Trey, some shrimp, okay. some sweet potato fries. So, linemen, one side of the ball or not, it doesn't matter. Just put some good grub. Scarf it down, right? Yeah, I'll be happy. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about, like, same with Trey, the way I led off with him, going into your sixth year, not your first rodeo. You've started a number of games. Um, how you compare the, the uh, kind of liftoff of this season compared to the other ones when you were younger? Yeah, it's definitely uh, more routine, right? So I, I have my processes down. I know what's going to go on. I know how loud it's going to be. I, the game just slows down every year. So, I don't know how much you read your own bio on uh, on the website. Do you read it? Yeah, I do. Uh, every now and then. Okay. Well, uh, and this, if even if you know this, this will be some trivia for them out there. Do you know uh, how many snaps you've taken as a rice out? It leads the team. Or well, could you give us a roundabout guesstimate? If you... So I, I've started forty-one to forty-two games. I forget and. Let's say 60 to 70 snaps per game. That's over 2,000 snaps. There you go. Yeah. Very good. You'll be taking your 2,786th snap Saturday. Oh, wow. Somewhere in the 3 o'clock Pacific Almost time. Almost 3,000. Yeah, there you realize. go. See? Who's, who's the, the math guy up here now? No, that, what, what is that? <laughs> when you take that in, you just, I can see the kind of twinkle dawning on you there. What's, what's that mean? To, I'm not expecting you to recall the uh, previous 2,785, but uh, <laughs> what's that mean to you leading the team in that category? No, uh, it feels great to have all that experience. Um, help lead the team, help lead us to win. Um, especially, uh, you know, over the time, you know, guys have come and gone. But, you know, I'm still here. I'm still grinding. And it, just knowing the system that well and everything just slows down the game. I just I don't have to think as much, and that's great. How special is it being a captain? Oh, it's, it's awesome, uh, especially – Voted on by your peers, so you get that recognition, that peer recognition, and that's just amazing. Mm -hmm. And tell us, going into an environment like we talked so with Trey in that previous segment, how do you focus? And I, it, like you said, the process is how do you how do you not try to look and against a marquee, fourteenth ranked opponent, all that? How do you just worry about what you do, as they say? We always talk about doing your one eleventh, right? Yeah, eleven players on the field. You do your job, and you trust in your brothers to do their job. So that's why I just focus on my day-to-day, -day, being the best version of me. You told me a couple weeks ago you thought the offensive line is much improved. What would have you liked about the guys around you? Is it the experience? And you got Ethan, who you spoke highly of, too. Yeah, definitely experience. Uh, Clay and Isaac Korkowski and myself. Um, and then just how close we've gotten. We've really meshed well together. Uh, I think out of my six years here, I think this O-line this year is the closest we've ever been. Sid Rich guy, right? Yep. Okay. What you uh, what you graduated already, or what what your uh, degree in? Yeah, I graduated in uh, uh, last year now, uh, 2021. Uh, majored in sports management, minored in business, and now I'm just like Trey. Uh, it's like the 48th week of my MBA, so <laughs> <laughs> second year. <laughs> my gosh, and and what would you like to do with that after the, the hopefully the playing days are long uh, long over from now? But what would you like to do with that? Any any particular area of sports? Yeah, catch uh, your fancy. Uh, sales, real estate, something that's self motivating, just like being an athlete. And I think that really transfers well over, and uh, having that intrinsic motivation really helps in those two areas. Yeah. We got Coach Straub coming up next segment. Uh, maybe you'll name yourself. I don't know, but uh, who's the strongest guy on the offensive line? Because we always think of that as the big, buff, early position. Right, probably, right, so. right. You know, one of the strongest guys is, I got to say, Ethan, he is a monster. Yeah. yeah. He is, like, just, he's very gifted with his uh, physical abilities, and he is uh, just 
a monster. Like you can't you can't get any better than that when once it comes to phys like physical uh, ability, and uh, I can't wait to to see him use that on the field on Saturday. Yeah. Hey, we appreciate you coming out, and uh, can't can't wait to see you in action for that 2,786 snap and many more. I guess that would be uh, about 800 added onto that, right? Give yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Shay. Thank you. Appreciate it. The Shay Baker joining us here on the high table here at Acme Oyster House. Stay tuned. More coming up next. We'll have strength coach Hans Straw back at Acme Oyster House. More of the Mike Bloomgren Show here from Learfield. Hey, Oscar. Oscar, wake up. Hi, this is Otis and Oscar. We're talking spokes oysters for Acme Oyster House. You've probably seen us on TV. My friend Oscar is, uh, sleeping. You know, we oysters like our beds. Anyway, drop by tonight for a dozen raw, a dozen char grilled, a seafood platter or po' boy, and maybe a few laughs. Come at me, bro. Not you. Back in the oyster house. Life's more fun with seafood. Double Tree by Hilton Houston Medical Center Hotel and Suites is the preferred hotel for anybody visiting the Medical Center, the Museum District, or Rice University. We offer the largest suites in the Medical Center, complete with full kitchens, and our full-service restaurant and outdoor pool will make your stay complete. We look forward to having you experience the Double Tree by Hilton Houston Medical Center Hotel and Suites soon, and if you do a group rate or 10 or more rooms, don't forget to call 713-528-7744. That's 713-528-7744. We interrupt your top 40 hits to issue this alert from the Carbach Brewing Company. In our efforts to brew our distinct and popular Hoppadillo IPA, we have unwittingly created a monster. A monster with an insatiable thirst. A monster that will not stop until it gets what it wants. An ice-cold Hoppadillo IPA. Just like the one I'm holding in my hand. Bold. Flavorful. Dry hopped. Irresistible. <laughs> Sweet as Mary! Hoppadillo. Find it before it finds you. Bravely brewed in Texas by the Carbach Brewing Company. Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Highlighting the owls on the gridiron. Welcome back to the Mike Bloomgren Show. Welcome back. Every Monday night here of this football season during the game week, you can join us here at Acme Oyster House for the Mike Bloomgren Show. We have our broadcast coming up from L.A. Memorial Coliseum. You can sync us up, syncmygame.com. That is on the Pac-12 network. And my old safety blanket, Walter, is uh, back with us as always in 11th year together for Mr. Nate Griffin and myself and uh, Hans Straub, Al's uh, longtime strength coach now. We have done a few of these. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Excited to get this season started. With most strength coaches, I imagine you get, you got to kind of watch because the intensity. But you, I know I can ask uh, certain questions, right? You yeah. Know? You, you don't have that dialed up now, but but you got to do that during the the practices, and obviously, like Trey was referencing, you, you got to get after them a lot of times. So. Yeah, there's there's two sides of everything. You know, you got to flip the script when you need to, and then you got to be able to handle it and and dial it back and and understand that there's times where you uh, have in depth conversations in a less aggressive tone. How is it working with the team for a fifth go around, right, compared to when you came in here with a lot of these guys? seeing them grow up literally before their eyes here. Yeah, it's something they touched on is that we've been together so much. It's they know what like they know what I'm going to say or how I'm going to react based off of what the team does in a run or a lift that day. And it's really nice. Like Coach Bloom talked about was it's a player driven program now. And I don't have to be the guy that goes and tells that, you know, sophomore or freshman is struggling to keep up the standard. I don't have to spend a lot of energy on those guys because they're going to go take care of it because it's their team. And they want to make sure that, hey, you're coming with us and let's get up to our standard. Like coach is going to run the, the ship and then we're going to get on and we're going to we're going to paddle as fast as we possibly can. So um, it's been great. And like like Trey said, he referenced y'all's strong relationship. How it was a little rocky as you, you kind of expect going up. Like what do freshmen, it's like drinking out of a fire hose, I imagine at first and Trey experienced that firsthand. And then they eventually develop into players like this. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's 
the maturation process over the last four years, you know, um, has been unbelievable. And those two guys right there that, you know, have, I've watched them really grow up in the sport at this level. And, um, anytime you go into a program and things are completely new or different than what they signed up for prior to, there's going to be a, a growth, uh, you know, growing pains. Um, but, you know, cooler heads prevail and a level of respect was built and developed through tough work and hard work. And now here we are today, um, going into our fifth year and it's, you know, we've really forged a tight bond. The units with uh, Trey and Shea, the offensive defensive line, always seen as the beefiest guys, obviously size wise, but uh, who's the low key and kind of underrated skill group or any group that uh, can, can come up on you? Or is it different year to year strength wise? Um, I mean, just off the top of my head, Kobe Campbell is probably the strongest, like, pound-for-pound pound kid we have wow. in the program. Um, obviously, you know him by his size, statures, yeah. not the largest human being, but he squatted over 500 pounds this summer. Uh, yeah, uh, right. 500 pounds. <laughs> um, and it was clean. It was really impressive. So um, a guy that weighs 170 pounds to throw 500 pounds on his back and, and do that was pretty impressive. Um, obviously, the room got really excited about that, and his teammates were very excited. Um, but – you know, usually those those running back, wide out kind of guys like that, the slot receiver dudes, um, Tyson Thompson, you know, transfer from HBU, you know, a little bit smaller in stature, but really well put together. Um, he's an absolute stud. And then um, Treshawn Chamberlain and Sean Fresh have been really, really impressive this year um, in their growth and development in the weight room. You know, Sean's a, a very lean individual, but he's very strong and very explosive. We talked a couple times uh, in, in camp. Speak a little bit to that, how you were saying, how you're, you're really encouraged, not the guys to buy in, but it's and maybe it's some getting the transfers. Like you mentioned, it, it, you were really high on the guys buying in from the young level and the, the veterans that have, have kept kept up with it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, <clears throat> it comes back to it. It's like when you start developing a program, uh, the older guys become a resource. And instead of every person that comes into the program having to ask me, like what's this or what's that, you know, there's only so many hours in a day that I can hit that touch point where now they, they, you know, a freshman offensive lineman can go into his uh, position room and he can sit down with Shea and Shea can lay out the entire summer. He knows exactly how we're going to do it. And the expectation a freshman D lineman comes in, he can talk to Trey and so forth. We have guys in every position room right now who have been with us for years and they know exactly what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. So as soon as those guys walk onto campus, they put them underneath their wing and they teach them, hey, here's what coach wants from you on this day, this day, and this day, and let's go forward. Um, tell us also about uh, coming into like this week to week. Do things like as the season progresses, do things change? Like uh, as, as the season goes longer, you got to work on different things, or is that all stuff that's worked on in the off season? I mean, there's a template in place um, for the season, um, and, and we'll adjust as we go. We've we've been very fortunate. The university has provided us with resources regarding technology. And, you know, we're constantly evaluating our guys on certain pieces of technology within the weight room and we'll run data points and we'll analyze it throughout the week. And if we start seeing trend lines in certain guys or certain position rooms, you know, I'll talk to Coach Bloom about that. But, um, you know, so we can have that conversation. He understands where his team is. But in my world, what I need to do is I need to make sure that if I need to back off on our guys, I can do it in the weight room or I can work on more recovery um, with our guys, um, we were fortunate enough to have a recovery cove um, in the players' lounge, um, and it's been a phenomenal addition to our program. So just now that we have those resources for our players, you know, guys like Josh Piercy who work really relentlessly hard, um, when we start to see their trend line start to dip in the performance output, we can go, hey, Kate, get in the recovery cove. Let's get the massage chair go. Let's get the massage going. Let's get some hydrotherapy with you and so forth. And now they're like, they have these things at their fingertips and they can go do it immediately and take care of their bodies. And then we can give them objective feedback like, hey, we're now going back up, see this, it works here, this works here. And, you know, we'll get a little bit sciencey with the guys who want to dive into it. And then the guys are just good with thumbs up. We go thumbs up. I think they can handle it at Rice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Discuss the rest of your staff. I know you had uh, some changes there too. Yeah, um, really fortunate. Um, I have uh, Zach Warren, who's been with me uh, since 2019. We were fortunate enough to be able to promote him to an associate role um, this this last spring. Um, and then we brought in two new faces, and we brought in Nick Cassetta um, from Nick, from New Mexico State, and he runs our nutrition. So he, I basically had two positions open, and I knew I wanted to go sports science with one route, and I wanted to go sports nutrition with the other route. 
Um, and, you know, Nick has done a phenomenal job of getting our Sendejo fueling station stocked and outfitted day in and day out. Um, he's constantly coming to me with different ideas or different uh, fueling options. Um, he works hand in hand with Roberta, um, who's our director of sports nutrition. But um, he's been phenomenal. He, he just he brings a, a certain side to him. He's a former uh, offensive or previous offensive lineman, so he handles the big dogs really well. Yeah. And then uh, a former intern of mine, uh, Morgan Coat, she uh, is an A and M graduate, and then she interned for us and worked for one of my close friends out of Fresno State. Um, but she's got a deep passion for sports science and sport analytics. So we were able to bring her back in an entry level position and, and she runs a lot of our data collection. Um, and, you know, it's been awesome with that whole deal where, you know, she's constantly spending hours at the computer crunching numbers for me and has taken that off my plate, which has allowed me to kind of dig deeper into some of the next level um, training modalities that are out there in the research and technology. The data is that obviously that's constantly changing. I mean, not just for the individual guys, but just at the field as a whole. Just it's unbelievable, yeah. um, and, and it can get overwhelming at times. We've learned that kind of you know, like keeping it simple and specific to certain areas is the best process because once you start digging really deep down the rabbit holes, um, you can get lost in the mix. And at the end of the day, you get, like on Saturday at three twelve in LA, we're kicking off. And if your readiness state isn't there, guess what, dude, that ball's kicking off. Like they're not caring. USC does not care about our readiness state, you know? So, um, you know, it's, it's funny. Like, I think it was Tom Brady talked about it. He's like, he, he's like, I don't want to know what my numbers are because that will play a thing in my mind. I, I like, I know who I am and what I need to do. Um, so some of our guys are like that. Some of our guys love to see the numbers and when they see their numbers are up, well, Hey, look at this, look at this. And they, they really roll with it. And then there's other guys that just don't don't work well with that. They start getting too deep into the, the analytics. Um, they just need to go play ball. Mm -hmm. And Saturday, 312, we'll be yeah. doing that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I always love the chat. Very yeah. much. Uh, strength coach Hans Straub joining us here at the high table here at Acme Oyster House. More of the Mike Bloomberg Show coming up from Learfield. Howdy Homemade Ice Cream is here. Howdy is an ice cream shop in Katy, Texas that makes ice cream in-house and has a unique mission to employ individuals that are differently abled. Stop by and enjoy some ice cream. With every scoop you buy, you help support employment for special needs. Coming to Rise Athletics venues in the fall. Build it, price it, own it. Shoppers in John Deere makes it as easy as one, two, three to get the John Deere tractor of your dreams. Number one, go to shoppers at sfstractor.com. Select the John Deere tractor you want, add the attachments you need. Number two, select your terms, see the price along with monthly payments and apply for financing. Number three, buy your John Deere tractor from shoppers and shoppers will deliver it for free. Shoppers makes it that easy to purchase your John Deere tractor. Build it, price it, own it. Only at shoppers. All things John Deere. Houston, we have a cocktail. All hands canned cocktails are made with six times distilled crab vodka at a sturdy 10% ABV to ensure you never have to sacrifice the quality of your provisions. Now available in six natural flavors, including raspberry lemonade, ruby red grapefruit, cherry limeade, cranberry, and vodka soda. And vodka tonic classic. Follow the adventure on Instagram at, at Drink All Hands and try these car strength cocktails for yourself at the next game. All hands, damn time cocktail. Proud sponsor of Rice Athletic. Big trip on the horizon? Before you depart, you've got to park. Parking Spot is a simpler, easier way to navigate airport parking, and you can save when you book online. You're guaranteed a spot, and we even pick you up at your trunk in our yellow and black spotted shuttles and take you straight to the terminal. Parking and saving come full circle at the Parking Spot. The Parking Spot, proud sponsor of Rice University. Visit theparkingspot.com to reserve your spot today. Another season of women's and men's college sports is underway. Follow your alma mater or favorite team in their pursuit of the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. Trophies will be awarded in June 2023 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. This is the Mike Bloomgren Show, live at Acme Oyster House. Here again, the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. 
We're back here at Acme Oyster House on uh, Westheimer. It is a, a, a wonderful, wonderful venue. They've got great specials here. Houston Restaurant Week's here, ending in a few days. But, my gosh, oysters, raw, char-grilled. Po' boys, po' boys, po' boys. They got tacos. They got platters. Lots of sides. Good stuff uh, after a uh, rice game or coming up here to uh, during the shows. You can uh, join some of their great uh, grub. Joined now by Executive Director of Player Personnel and Recruiting, Marco Regalado. How are you doing, sir? I'm fantastic. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, back of the room, some uh, Marco love there. So, first year with the program. What do you think so far? What's uh, I know you're you're very Texas savvy and familiar. So, what what have you thought uh, specifically in Houston around South Maine here? Oh, I'm just excited to be back in the great state. Um, you know, that was one of the big reasons why I went out to Washington State because Coach Rolovich wanted us to have a big footprint there, and that was something we did when we got there. We had two kids from Texas on the roster and ended up with 14 or 15 by the time I left. So. When Coach Bloomgren called me with an opportunity to, you know, come back and join a program as prestigious as Rice back in my home state, I mean, it was a no-brainer for me. Plus, just because I've known Coach Bloom since I was a high school coach trying to get my kids recruited. Um, so I knew what kind of person he was. And okay. I figured if he just vertically aligned himself, you know, his whole staff with him like that, they're all good people. So, like I said, I was really excited to join that. So it's interesting. And in most assistants and uh, staff I talk to, there's obviously a connection there. And, uh, of course, everybody knows everybody in the coaching world. But uh, we'll discuss why you wanted to, to come to Rice. And not, not just the Texas connection, but Rice specifically. What, what do you love about it? I just love the, you know, the kind of kids you can recruit here. Um, you know, some people can see that as a, as a crutch or something like that. I think it's just it, it, it makes it more exciting that you're, the quality of kid um, that you're able to bring here. Uh, you know, that high academic but can still play football at a high level, um, just kind of feeding into the whole theme of things, intellectual brutality. Um, and a little fun fact about me is like something that I appreciate and really believe in because that was something that was always preached to me. My mom was an educator, um, took academics really seriously. I graduated valedictorian. So okay. um, it, w it was something that I really believed in. One valedictorian at the table, Walter? No. One out, one out of three, <laughs> not too bad. So you're from Zapata, Texas, yes. right? But you, you had lots of coaching crisscrosses. I was looking at the bio you've been around. So how did uh, South Texas form you? But then you go to college at uh, Texas State, right? So kind of give us the uh, Marco timeline there. So I uh, you know, graduated, went to Texas State for my undergrad, started off you know, trying to be a physical therapist. It's what I thought I wanted to do until I did a 300-hour internship and realized it wasn't all that fun. Uh, so then uh, I graduated, went to Texas A&M Kingsville as first as an athletic training GA. Um, so I was involved in the athletic department. Um, I'd find ways to sneak into the football meetings because I, I loved football. And uh, they had a couple, you know, a little shifting in the staff and they had a GA spot open. They asked, hey, do you want to you do football? I was like, yeah, sure, let's try it out. <laughs> uh, that kind of changed the trajectory of everything. And, you know, I graduated and had an opportunity to coach at a local high school. Uh, there in Kingsville, Texas, was there for a couple of years. Spent, Mathis, was that? No, it was Santa Gertrude's. Okay. It was uh, Santa Gertrude's Academy High School, okay. so it's public school but privately owned by the King Ranch. Wow, great, okay. Crazy situation. But, okay, I did not know that about it. Uh, spent two years there, then went to Mathis, so they're in the Coastal Bend, uh, down back to the Valley at PSJ Memorial, and then I had an opportunity to make the jump to Fort Worth, uh, Eden High School. That's where I started really building a lot of relationships with uh, – uh, college coaches when you you know you have kids that are getting actively recruited uh, so that's when I you know I made that jump to Washington State um, so that that really abbreviated version <laughs> the, everybody knows no no secrets the lifeblood of college programs is the recruiting so um, when you go out like you already you talked about as we all know the great academic uh, state the stature of rice uh, um, what, what are some of the things you're, you're proud of that you're able in, in the relationships you're able to uh, you've already formed and building new ones? There's nothing like that fraternity that is Texas high school football coaches, is it? Oh, no doubt, especially when you're one of them. You know, you're, it's it's a fraternity you're part of, and I mean, you look at these two young men right here that are that are captains of this team. They're products of Texas high school football, um, and a lot of the great young men on our team are as well. So, you know, there, there's a, a huge amount of talent in this state. Um, so I just think it'd be it's it's using all these relationships that, you know, the staff has built that I have built to try to find those kids and keep them here, especially here in the city of Houston. Mm -hmm. 
So you got to you got to enlighten me. Uh, between the two of us, we have uh, 32,000 Twitter followers here. So you, you, you had a strong social media game. I'm very impressed. So maybe it's just a selfless question of one, but uh, discuss your, your game there because that, that goes into everything now with uh, young people these days in recruiting as well, too. So that has to help, right? No doubt. Um, so what happened was when the pandemic happened uh, and everything shut down, I got bored and downloaded an app uh, called TikTok. Uh, ah. and, uh, out of boredom, I just started kind of doing coaching parodies, you know, just kind of, to, to make my staff that we had there at PSG Memorial laugh, you know, uh, just give us something, a little, some, a little levity in a pretty dark situation. And, uh, the right couple people retweeted it and it just kind of caught like fire. Um, so like overnight had all these followers, uh, it was pretty overwhelming at first, you know, having, you know, news stations and football scoop and uh, the athletic and all these people calling just wanting to know your story and i mean the the, the basis of the story was i just kind of want to make people smile you know that's that's really what i wanted to do but it's really helped me uh you know really expand my network um and get to meet a lot of people um especially you know just in this profession even in recruiting because it's it's a lot of it's not really who you know it's a lot about who knows you so it's it's the building that trust so uh you know when reaching out to these coaches and trying to bring kids to rice it's if they know and they recognize your name, you know, it's a level of trust that you, you gain. Hey, Mark, I know this won't be the last time we talk. Thanks. Thanks a lot. So I guess you're like my wife. My wife says, you got to get on TikTok. I'm like, uh, I don't know about that. But, but Marco says it. Uh, I recommend it. I'll tell her I'll listen to her. Hey, thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks to uh, Marco uh, Regalado for joining us here on the high table, the executive director of player personnel recruiting. Back in uh, a bit, we'll uh, preview those USC Trojans with uh, WV family head football coach Mike Bloomer. Stay back, back right after this here from Learfield. Hey, Oscar, Oscar, wake up. Hi, this is Otis and Oscar. The Talking Spokes Oysters for Acme Oyster House. You've probably seen us on TV. My friend Oscar is, uh, sleeping. You know, we oysters like our beds. Anyway, drop by tonight for a dozen raw, a dozen char grilled, a seafood platter or a po' boy, and maybe a few laughs. Come at me, bro. Not you. Acme Oyster House. Life's more fun with seafood. Howdy Homemade Ice Cream is here. Howdy is an ice cream shop in Katy, Texas that makes ice cream in-house and has a unique mission to employ individuals that are differently abled. Stop by and enjoy some ice cream. With every scoop you buy, you help support employment for special needs. Coming to Rise Athletics venues in the fall. Houston, we have a cocktail. All hands canned cocktails are made with six times distilled craft vodka at a sturdy 10% ABV to ensure you never have to sacrifice the quality of your provisions. Now available in six natural flavors, including raspberry lemonade, ruby red grapefruit, cherry limeade, cranberry, and vodka soda. And vodka tonic classic. Follow the adventure on Instagram at, at Drink All Hands and try these car strength cocktails for yourself for the next game. All hands, damn time cocktails. Proud sponsor of Rice Athletics. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Lambo, your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com for Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. You're listening to the latest on Owls football with the head coach, Mike Bloomgren. Now, let's go back inside Acme Oyster House. And Troy and everybody else, too. Thank you very much for coming out. Uh, wrapping up here, our uh, debut edition here of all the shows here in this 2022-2023 uh, slate. We have Dunleavy Family and Football Coach, Mike Bloomgren, since we last talked coach. A lot of content out there. I wanted to ask you also about uh, Marco and Hans, the unique roles that they play. How special are they to you? Yeah, they're so important to our organization. You know, Coach Straub has done so much for our program. You know, I, I like to talk about them as the present and the future because Marco's in recruiting. But the truth is, like, Hans and his team,
team do such a good job building and developing the guys we bring in. But, you know, I think the, the product you're going to see on the field is largely because of Coach Straub this year from a mindset standpoint to a physical standpoint. That's really exciting. And then you look at what Marco has been able to do, step into this role and got the number two recruiting class in Conference USA right now. I don't think we've ever finished higher than fifth. And uh, I think when one of our commits gets ranked, I think we'll be first overall. And, and that's really cool. That's just fun stuff, how things are going so well with those guys. And uh, then you hear from Trey and Shay and, and how excited they are. It, it, uh, it really fires me up for Saturday. I would also say this, like you hear both those guys talk about like they're graduates. Four of our five captains are graduates. Three of them are in the Rice MBA program. I mean, are you kidding me? Like, it's <laughs> unbelievable. They're doing okay, Coach. <laughs> yeah, they're doing okay. These kids are amazing. So two of the biggest storylines in college football uh, this past offseason involved USC with Lincoln Riley at the time. That was the biggest story when he moved from OU to USC. And, of course, USC moving to the Big Ten and then plop Rice right in the middle of it for that opening game. How excited are you to uh, take the team into battle there Saturday? I'm incredibly excited. You know, having played in that venue a number of times, uh, it's a cool place to play, and it's an even better place to win. And and I remember every celebration we've had in that locker room when we went in there and beat them. And I've tried to express to these guys how much fun we will have. So they got the big hype with Caleb Williams coming as a transfer with Coach Riley and also Jordan Addison, the much ballyhooed. But oh yeah, by the way, he's the best wide receiver in college football last year. So, but speak first to the offense on how. You, you kind of know, but there's not film with all of them together. So how do you approach that? Yeah, when you talk about their offense, I'm, obviously you know the system is going to be Lincoln's. It's going to look and, and feel like Lincoln's system, and there's going to be tempo mixed in. and uh, There's going to be throwing the ball down the field, and you saw Caleb Williams do it at a high level from the second half of the Texas game on last year at Oklahoma. You know, So he, he's uber-talented. Um, and then you do bring in a Blitnikoff winner. You bring in a lot of other pieces, you know, uh, that were that were brought there. And uh, it's kind of like the um, the play Hamilton. There's these pieces from all these different places brought together all at one place at one time. But you know what? Like, I, I love the way our guys have come together as a team, and I wouldn't trade them. Their defense, uh, they're, they're trying to figure some things out as far as the depth, and we'll know Saturday more about that. But the, their defense is stout D-line. They've got a, a, some tough guys up the middle there, don't they? They do, and, and honestly, the linebackers that they've had transfer into that place are outstanding as well. And, and it is a little bit of a mystery, right, JP, just to be honest about it. We, we know the, the garbage that's gone in, for lack of a better term, the people that have gone in. But Lincoln's not going to release a depth chart until sometime tomorrow or maybe Thursday. And uh, so there's all these shenanigans going on right now about who's going to play where. And we're trying to figure it out. And the, and the bottom line for us is they're going to be nameless and faceless. And as long as we do our jobs and do it well, we're going to be just fine. So that's uh, our focus is on where they're going to align based on history and, and looking at that Oklahoma film, whether it's the offense of Lincoln Riley or the defense of Alex Grinch, their defensive coordinator. And uh, – all those pieces will sort themselves out sometime between now and kickoff on Saturday. Can't wait, Coach. Thank you. Me either. Dunleavy Family Head Football Coach, Bar Rice Owls, Mike Bloomgren. Thanks to him for uh, obviously coming out. Thanks to Hans Straub, Marco Regalado joining us, Trey Schumann, Shea Baker, Walt Engineering, Ashley back at the studio. Have a great rest of this night. God bless. Go Owls. We'll talk to you Saturday from L.A. Memorial Coliseum. This has been the Mike Bloomgren Show from Learfield. On the Rice Sports Network from Learfield, you've been listening to the Mike Bloomgren Show live from Acme Oyster House. Acme Oyster House, the best little oyster house in Texas. Tonight's show is brought to you by The Parking Spot. The Parking Spot, we have airport parking covered. Also by the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 716. Lighting up Rice University in Houston for over 100 years. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation of the Rice Sports Network.